Hello everyone and welcome back to my flight career series, this time in Microsoft Flight Simulator 10. And we are going to fly from Marysville, Yuba County Airport down to Hayward on a path that I'm very familiar with. So I'm going to do a pure VFR without tuning the, the nav. I'm just going to follow Highway 99 South and then follow Highway 80 into the Bay Area. And I should be able to figure out where Hayward is given VFR flight rules and everything. So uh, no interesting Morse code beeping this time, but we do need to start our FS passenger stuff. So let me get the right capture for that. Okay, so FS passenger flight, uh, start flight. Okay, so two passengers are waiting, and hopefully this time I can do it right. I'm only setting the fuel load to 40%. And hopefully we'll be relatively quick compared to last time. I'm not going to allow too much luggage. It's just 30%, uh, 30 pounds. And we've got two passengers, 48 and 60 in age. Moderate weight. Okay, and I'm going to set type. It should be just a normal type. And set destination is Hayward. Which, if you remember, is going to be sort of my hub. And I expect it to be a one-hour flight. Destination set. That's really loud. Okay, um, I'm going to load immediately and start. Okay, let's have them fasten their seat. Oop, I can't click there. Fasten their seatbelt. I did have it uh, plot a course for me, so I've got a knee board of the VORs if necessary. But I want this to be a quick, simple flight, nothing too complicated. So, but we will have uh, air traffic control and I'm going to select runway for takeoff. Looks like runway 14 to me. Um, announce taxi. No, uh, I think I'll just depart and announce clear of runway. I think that'll be fine. I'm already on the runway. Okay, let's make sure we've got enough flaps to satisfy FS passengers. Now some people suggested certain realism add-ons for, for X-Plane 11 in particular and I am considering those. There is a realism pack for the Cessna 172. I'm, I would like to get it on sale if possible. That would be nicer. Oop, uh, I forgot different. See, X-Plane 11 I've got the elevator trim on the hat switch. Yeah, I, I think it, it would be a good thing. I'm, but I do want to get it on sale, if that's possible. I'm uh, in particular a July Fourth sale if they have one. Okay, I should be able to retract flaps without the FS passengers being annoyed at me. Yes. Well, our speed looks like it's going to be good on this part of the journey. Well, still need more elevator trim. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, it looks like we're climbing at 90 knots. But... That's as fast a climb as I need to have. I'm not going to be flying very high. It's about 100 nautical miles from here to Hayward. I know I'm going in the, generally the right direction, but I haven't really acquired the highway. You can see we've got photo scenery up ahead. I do have photo scenery of the Bay Area region. And that was from Mega Scenery.
It's a little bit outdated. I think they have a newer version of the Mega Scenery stuff right now than I have here. Okay, I'm gonna throttle down a bit. Okay, I uh, will be flying this leg without autopilot. I mean, that must be Sac uh, Sacramento International right up front, isn't it? Highway 99 merges with uh, I-5, Interstate 5, which passes by, uh, it's sort of a little bit off to the side of Sacramento International, but basically, it's around there. Maybe there the highway's over there. In any case, I have no concern about not going in the right direction, though I should probably give Sacramento International a wide berth. Well, just to be doubly sure, I guess I can, even though I said I wouldn't tune the navs to the VORs, since I'm not directly over the highway, let me just tune Hayward. Hayward is, well, Oakland Center. Oakland Center is probably a good choice. Yep, 62 miles there. And we should be going through at 188, so let me just tune our track. I don't hear any beeping from it though. Eh, we're pretty much on course as expected. Yep. Even without following the highway, I've pretty much managed to figure out the heading. Again, I'm very familiar with this area. So, no big surprise. I've flown this particular leg many times. It was fairly regular of me to fly between San Francisco International and Sacramento in order to Our test airplanes out. On the day, November 2, 600, uniform, climbing to 5,700 for 9,000. Now once we get to Hayward, uh, my intention is to leave this Cessna there. We have another Cessna, a different serial number or whatever, um, up at uh, Seattle for training purposes. Though we'll probably be moving on to different planes by now. I don't know if the IFR training is going to be in a Cessna or not. But uh, this Cessna will have its base at Hayward, and I will purchase from FS Passengers a different plane. And if possible, that'll be a Lancair Legacy if it allows me to buy that one. And the reason I'm buying that one is because that will make the flights between Seattle and Hayward much quicker. The Lancair Legacy has about the same mass as this, a little bit more mass. I believe the Lancair Legacy is still under the limit for FS passengers for me, which is about 3,300 pounds. So yeah, there's Sacramento International. If you can see the buildings up there, that's Sacramento. Not the best rendition ever. It'll look better in X Plane 11 without a doubt. The photo scenery is nice though. Very crisp. This is good stuff. Mega scenery overall did a fairly good job. Really groundbreaking when I got this scenery uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator back in the day. It's a little bit dated now. Well, this right here below us, that might be Highway 80, or Interstate 80. Pretty sure we can follow that all the way down if we wanted to. NorCal approach, Global Freeways 828 with you. Global Freeways 828 with NorCal approach. Well, let me Roger. do that. Okay, so we're just gonna follow this highway down to the Bay Area. University. I wonder if this is Davis. I think this must be Davis. Okay, yes, just confirm this city we are passing is Davis. Home of UC Davis, obviously. And we continue following Interstate 80 down. We can see autogen cars on the highway, but of course, uh, it being photo scenery, They've also got shots of cars that were on the highway when the aerial photo was taken. I guess there's no real avoiding that. 
Unless you have uh, the stock roadways lead on top of it. Which is what X-Plane 11 does. I think it places stock roadways on top of the photo scenery. So then you don't get the images of the cars that were there at the time. Though in X-Plane 11 with the Ortho 4 XP photos, sometimes you get clouds on the scenery. That's one artifact. I don't think this is Vacaville yet. I think Vacaville is still up ahead. But that's the next big city that we're going to be passing. At some point or another I want to do trips following Interstate 80 across the country and also following Route 66. Maybe Interstate 80 eastward and then Route 66 westward, that would be appropriate. So maybe this is Vacaville, maybe it isn't. Let me use the radio to check. Not sure. University is still the closest airport and that's the Davis one. This is not Davis anymore though. Uh, I don't know if there's an uh, airport associated with Vacaville. Well, there's an airport up ahead. You can see the light there. And I think that's more likely to be Vacaville. Which begs the question, what is this particular town? Okay. This is the town of Dixon. So, Dixon, California, everybody. And I don't want to get in the way of that particular airport, so I'm gonna shift which side of the highway I am. I'll have the highway to my right instead. Okay, just check the map, and the airport outside Vacaville, or really not really outside, it's really right next to the heart of Vacaville, is called Nut Tree Airport. So, that's what we see over there, Nut Tree Airport. I suppose one would expect that at least some of uh, these fields outside Vacaville are devoted to nut trees, almonds perhaps. There's Highway 80. Let's make sure we've got it in sight. Good day for VFR flying, it is real world weather. So this is the Cessna over Vacaville and Highway 80 cuts through that little gap in the hills and heads further south and it heads to the city of Fairfield. It's indicating low fuel but I started off with only 40 percent so that's not a surprise. I think the flight plan said that I only needed nine gallons nine to ten gallons I put twenty in and we're more than halfway there already what we've got indicated right now is about seven gallons in each tank I think I might head down to Edwards and then to Nellis Air Force Base and do some fighter training there before I actually take, take on airliners and that means DCS world folks Nellis Air Force Base, strongly associated with DCS World. So, this is the city of Fairfield. Looking good. My impression of Vacaville is that there are a lot more stores by the highway than, than Fairfield. Uh, Fairfield, a little bit quieter, I think. Okay, we see some wa water up ahead, and that's the flow out from the delta to the bay. Uh, the delta is the convergence of the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers. And the bay is, of course, the San Francisco Bay.
as we follow Highway 80 here. We'll be passing through the city of Vallejo. And then we'll cross the outflow of the Delta. If I accidentally took the wrong branch, I would be following Highway 680 and that would pass off to the side. I think uh, this might be the branching actually. I think this is the junction between 680 and Highway 80. So that's another way to cross. There's a bridge there and then there's a bridge at Vallejo. I normally just think of the highways, but the bridge for 680 I think is the Benicia Bridge and at Vallejo is the Carquinas Bridge. Also at Vallejo you can see some complex waterways. Vallejo is right up ahead. You can see uh, quite a lot of lakes and such. That's actually the outflow of the Napa River. And so right up there where I'm currently looking is Napa and up the Napa Valley is uh, where famous wineries are the Napa Valley it's interesting I wonder why that R is lit up but this R isn't and why there are two R's next to each other in the first place hmm. oh, nope. finally got some communication I was wondering about that so this under us is the city of Vallejo. I think there's a six flag somewhere around here. Okay, and to our right is the San Francisco Bay, the northern portion of it. And uh, this channel you see here is part of the outflow from the Napa River. You can see the river flowing through there. This is a pretty good rendering of how this bridge is, at least last I remember it. Okay, continuing to follow Highway 80. That's the bridge, and that's the highway continuing. Actually, from here we can see the Golden Gate Bridge already. You can see it very clearly. I don't know what's glistening over there. It's probably a building with bad reflections. Hayward itself doesn't have a VOR. But I picked Hayward because it was cheaper to buy as a hub in Simbody. We could go a little bit closer to the bay and then we can avoid this cloud. That's better for the VFR stuff. Highway 80 is still a little bit to our right anyway. There we go. That uh, keeps us clear of the cloud. All the buildings in front of us are Oakland. Buildings to the right across the bay, that's San Francisco. Nice view across the bay today. Romeo Alpha 409 er contact NorCal approach on 134.5. Hopefully being a few minutes late isn't going to irritate my passengers. So far, 100% passenger satisfaction. The new span of the Bay Bridge isn't, uh, isn't depicted here. There's the old version of the Bay Bridge. Heads into Treasure Island and then the suspension portion, but now there's suspension on North both Cal sections. Approach. Piper, November 7, 8001 is at 4,400, climbing 5,000. Well, this is Oakland. I'm not too sure why it looks so snowy, but it is Oakland. Unavoidably uh, flying into Hayward, we're going to be flying over Oakland International itself. I'm not too sure. I mean, according to the airport charts for Hayward, that's basically the track. So there's no avoiding it. Wow, there's a lot more weather around here than I thought there would be. It is practically an overcast. 
And we've got some turbulence. Well, so much for 100%. Turn right heading 330. NorCal departure, Piper November 1369. Okay, the track's coming in. Piper November 1369. NorCal departure, Roger. Altimeter 3022. Turn right heading 330. Piper 001. Romeo Alpha Warp Zero Niner, traffic is 8 o'clock, warp smile, at 2,800, Boeing 737, report them inside. I, uh, do not see uh, traffic and I don't... I think that was before I made my turn, so... I do not see the, the 737. Traffic not in sight. Romeo Alpha Four Zero Niner. Traffic not in sight. See, that's the thing. I mean, the track does go over Oakland International, and you can see Oakland International right below us. You can also see Hayward right in front of us. That's the Pappy out there. Those lights. Uh, why can I not acknowledge? Make straight in huh. runway one. Zero, I was pressing left. one. Romeo Alpha four zero niner. Romeo Alpha four zero niner. Clear to land. Runway one zero left. Okay. Clear to land. Runway one zero left. Romeo Alpha four zero niner. Ten left, huh? That's not the one with the pappy. That one's ten right. I've got the short runway. Mine's is only 3,107 feet long. The main runway is 5,694. Mine's only 75 feet wide, too. Actual runway heading is 106. I note this because I have to get used to it. We're going to be doing a lot of flying in and out from here. I suppose I could still use the Pappy indicators on the main runway. Shouldn't be too far off from what we need for 10 left. I bet if I don't put two notches of flaps they're gonna say I don't have the right flaps for landing. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Okay everyone, unfortunately I made a little bit of a recording mistake, had a bit of a mishap, and I didn't get the landing portion. What happened was I pressed F8 to fully extend the flaps for landing, but F8 is actually the hotkey for starting and stopping the recording in OBS for me. I actually should have just pressed F7 to fully extend the flaps. F7 does it incrementally, whereas F8 extends the flaps fully immediately. And I usually don't use F8, but for some reason I did it there. Fortunately, FS Passengers still logs the flight. And so let me make sure you get to see this. All right. And so if we go to pilot, view pilot log, oops, select pilot, view pilot log, you can see the flight between uh, Marysville and Hayward there. Result perfect, by the way. So I'm really pissed that I didn't actually get to show you the landing. Um, an hour and seven minutes, but anyway, let's uh, take, uh, you can always access your detail. This is one reason I like FS Passengers, because you can get all the details of the flight. Okay. Uh, real flight time, one hour and seven minutes. Uh, landing touchdown speed, 61 feet per minute. So that is very nice. Landing speed, 55 knots. And um, yeah. So we got 2,600 only, but it was a very short flight. But we had a little bit of turbulence, but they were satisfied 98%. 3% increase to our comp company reputation, which helps in filling up the larger airliners. And also we've got a very smooth landing. Good flight, no problems. Land at the scheduled airport, not delayed. And uh, unfortunately it's only 180 points, whereas uh, the one where I messed up on, 
That one was, what, uh, minus 420, so I still haven't made up for that. Remi remember, the main problem there was forgetting to set proper flaps on takeoff, and of course being late, but that was 300 points right there. Tough to ca uh, you know make up for stuff like that. So we better get the flaps right to FS passenger's satisfaction. But I won't end here because it's not it's not satisfactory what we've uh, you know I didn't do a proper landing or didn't record a proper landing, so I'm not satisfied in presenting a video like that. So what I'm going to do is do a little fly around the Bay Area, test flying uh, the next aircraft I'm going to buy for FS passengers. I mean you know in the game, and that is going to be the Lancair Legacy, and I have to decide which one. This is not a plane that comes with uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. I forget which, uh, who made this particular Lancair Legacy. It's been a long time since I got it. Mm, I'm trying to pick a color. How does this one look? I'll take this. I'll take blue. I think it's good. Uh, very high cruising speed. The question is, do I get to fly it with my current flight rating? Empty weight is 2,790 uh, pounds, but maximum gross weight is 3,550. The, uh, the limit for my current flight rating is right between those. So it depends on whether it reads the empty weight or the maximum gross weight. Well, uh, we'll see. Let me try. I'll purchase it. Eventually, I'll want to fly it. It's a very nice plane. This brings up another question, by the way. I'm not entirely sure how to start planes cold and dark and on a ramp in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I know. Oh, I've got some traffic backed up. Um, I know how to do that in X Plane 11, but I can't find the setting to start with the engine. Ooh, start with the engine off and on a ramp. So, yeah, if you guys uh, know how to do that, I'm sure you know how to do that. Uh, uh, you can mention that to me. So, the way we buy aircraft is buy current aircraft. I feel like I want this to be in a good state. But, um, yeah, let, let's have this one be brand new. Okay, the question is, can I fly it? I mean, it's a single-engine propeller airplane. We'll see. So, well, now I don't have to have it be that uh, monitor capture version. And I'm going to start flight. No parking brake. Okay, well, fine. Better than saying my pilot can't do it. Four passengers. Oh, you guys can't see that, actually. Okay, here we go. Four passengers. I don't think I should have four passengers. This plane can't. Ah, see, payload model not found. So I have to tell it a few things. Um, I'm going to say we can have three passengers. But that's pushing it. There are two jump seats in the back, basically. Pressurized, no. Ticket price economy, definitely. Well, this is what it wants if we create our own. But I don't know where the positions of the seats are supposed to be. Okay, um, it should know the maximum takeoff weight and everything. And our current flight type is not going to be point to point. It's going to be a flight tour. So must land at the same airport, limited to a maximum of 15 passengers, income based on flight time, which is uh, not distance, which is what it's normally. And should last at least 10 minutes, but less than 3 hours. Okay. Okay, it's going to let me fly it, so that's excellent. Now, I haven't had a proper tutorial for the Lancair Legacy, and I don't think I have a manual for it. I'll look up the manual after I do this uh, basic orientation flight. I really need to know the details. Okay, here we are. The propeller sounds we're hearing are the planes waiting for us. Mm, I think we're uh, we're headed east, actually. Hayward, ground, Romeo Alpha Niner Three Niner with Sierra. Request taxi for takeoff east departure. Romeo Alpha Niner. 
Niner 3 Niner, taxi 2 and hold short of runway 10 right using taxiway runway 10 right, contact tower on 118 point Niner when ready. Okay, so I don't have a manual for how to start this, but I'm just going to use, you know, the same sort of flow that I had with the Cessna, which means I need to find the battery. I mean, that makes sense, right? Gear down. Mixture. The mixture axis is not operating. I need to make sure I parent the mixture axis properly. Um, okay, battery is on. Strobe light should be on. I think I just have to turn the key and it'll start. Okay. Warning, fuel pressure. Fuel pressure? Uh, it sounds like it's all right. Make sure to set the flaps properly, you know, that's going to be important. Uh, what's our light there? Decision height. Yeah, okay, I believe that. Okay. Here we go. So that is good, because it'll be much quicker for me to get between Hayward and Seattle for the training with this plane. And it's a nice plane, too. Oops. It's true. It's true. I rushed that. Romeo Alpha Niner Three Niner, you are not clear well, to take off. What what am I supposed to do about it right now? All the things have already logged my takeoff. I can't take it back. I wonder if FS passengers is gonna get annoyed with me because I didn't get takeoff clearance. I doubt it. Okay, so we are headed over to South Bay. This is probably Fremont. I believe this is Highway 880. Below us. Let's follow Highway 880 around. You can see why I like high wing aircraft for sightseeing though, the wing is very much in the way in this case. But otherwise it's a very nice plane. So south of uh, Fremont is Milpitas, and Milpitas is basically where Silicon Valley proper is, and then San Jose, Sunnyvale, places like that, this is the South Bay. And you can see with the hills ringing the place why it's called a valley. It's a, it is a valley. So this is how we look. Looking good. Let's see. Can't really see the Dumbarton Bridge from here. But I believe uh, that airport right there is San Jose International. Okay, so downtown San Jose, everybody. This looks nice and crisp, doesn't it? This is looking good. I'm not sure. I think uh, this highway is. I think it's 280. 880 turns into 280. It just changes names. 
And then there's also Highway 101 around here. The little gray spot you see to the right is Moffett Field. And that's uh, just nestled uh, north of Sunnyvale. Sunnyvale is where Apple and all those, well, some of those companies are. It's funny, uh, why my avionics aren't on? <laughs> Uh, so from here you get a better view of Moffett Field. We'll fly a little bit closer to it. But you can see the large hangar there. Very famous and iconic. There we go, an in-cockpit view of Moffett Field. Unfortunately, the ground textures look rather blurry. This is a problem that I don't have in X-Plane 11, thankfully. Even though the texture is there are just as intense because of the photo scenery as they are here but somehow it manages to avoid blurriness better let's go a little bit slower there is some turbulence well I'm VFR strictly right now and I'm also sightseeing, so I have to stay below the clouds. We're really at the maximum for this plane. And there is a penalty for going over speed with FS passengers, by the way. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to make sure we don't go through any clouds. Okay, uh, off to the right we can see Dumbarton Bridge, which means that uh, on this side of the bridge, the west side of the bridge is Palo Alto. East Palo Alto first and then Palo Alto. Between Sunnyvale, uh, which is basically where the Moffett Field is, and Palo Alto is Mountain View. Many tech companies all over this place might have heard of Mountain View from time to time. You see a bridge basically in front of us, and that is the San Mateo Bridge. On the west side of the bridge is actually Foster City, and San Mateo is a little bit further to the north. San Mateo is basically right next to the airport. And by the airport, I mean San Francisco International, of course. I think I can take the seatbelt sign off as long as there's no no turbulence. But we are flying very low. The highway next to us, to our right, is Highway 101. And Highway 280 will be to our left, sort of following a ridge of the mountain. Okay, and there is San Francisco International. I guess I'll have them wear the seat belts during the turbulence, just in case it gets worse. So, there's the terminal, or the terminals at San Francisco International. And doubtless we're making air traffic control very annoyed, though they're not saying anything, so I guess I'm alright. I am tuned properly. And now we are approaching San Francisco. Just uh, south of San Francisco is South San Francisco. This is this area here. Okay. Let me continue to look for my avion. Oh, avionics master seems to be on. Let me let me try and toggle. Well, that the autopilot responds. Maybe I just have to turn these on or something. Okay, but I'm flying pretty low to be interested in that right now. 
I haven't checked the maps. Probably San Francisco has protected airspace in certain parts. But I gleefully neglected that. Okay, so San Francisco as it's rendered here. At least we have photo scenery, but obviously we don't have the best selection of buildings. I think there is a nice scenery of San Francisco available. I think Aerosoft or something. But I, I with the Aerosoft city sceneries, I tend to get very bad frame rates. So. So, Bay Bridge to our right, Alcatraz will be to our left. Overall satisfaction seems to have gone down because of the turbulence. Ten left. I'm I'm a faster plane this time. You couldn't give me ten right. I don't know if I can actually fly straight, and I'm going too fast. Well, we've got speed brakes on this thing, that's nice. What do they look like? Just little things on the wings, if you can see that. And it sure needs the speed brakes. Speed brakes in. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. Uh... I'm gonna go around. Angle, angle, push, push. Uh, can we not report a go around? I swear the flaps do hardly anything on this. Happy on the main runway says I'm fine, but I don't believe that's true here. And I'm okay, well. Well, if I stop in time, I stop in time, darn it. I'll have to look up Romeo Alpha Niner Street Niner exit runway when able. What kind of runway this is supposed to use? That was a rough landing, but it was logged. It is done. Uh, exit via taxiway C. Wow, this thing does not turn very well. Does nose gear not turn at all? Do I have to enable that? You know, with airliners, you have to enable that. Uh, parking will be fine. We can't refuel anyway. I found that out. Uh, FS passengers does not like you refueling in the middle of the flight. Okay. I can follow directions, I think. Wow. Them tax, uh, telling you that they want you to go taxiway C, A, and D does not tell you exactly where you're supposed to end up. It only seems to do nose wheel steering when I apply the brakes. Okay, I'm not ending up in that parking spot. <laughs> I can't back out, so that'll have to do. Parking brake on. Yeah, that's not right. 
That's not very good, but I don't know how to do ground handling with this thing. Not the way I do with the Cessna, which is odd. But I'll have to learn. It seems awkward right now, though. Okay, well, let's see how FS passengers dealt with all that. Okay, uh, well, they considered the landing touchdown nice, but I think they're judging from, like, airliners. Relieved to have landed safely after the extreme weather he experienced during landing. Okay. Uh, it wasn't much by way of income, 1450 I mean, the plane cost 300000 so it took a while to recoup the cost of the plane. Much, I mean, and of course we have to pay fuel costs, airport taxes, insurance costs, and such. But um, we got a boost to our reputation, and it was a perfect flight, 300 points. Made a very nice landing. I swear I didn't really... Anyway... But uh, extreme weather conditions during approach, if, if they say so. Um, and I'm happy that I at least get to use the Landcare Legacy at my current um, flight status, because it could have easily been considered too heavy. Take a look at company manager, currently have uh, 2.4 million, so that flight only getting 1,000 is not much. Um, but three flights made, and... Uh, Aircraft maintenance is a thing, by the way. We have to repair the Cessna. Eight bucks. Not much. Probably just top off the oil, I guess. Anyway. So, there we go. Um, that is a pair of flights. And a little tour of the Bay Area. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.